describe the African Borble breed? The breed, so I'd say the South African Borble breed itself um, is a large breed dog. Um, I mean, they grow pretty fast. I mean, within a year, he was over 100 pounds. Um, now at two years, I would say he's any, anywhere between like 160 to maybe 170, one, yeah, 160 to 170. Um, he's on the lean side. Uh, he eats a lot. I think what's the large bag of kibble? It's a 44 pound or is it 33? 33. So we do 33 pounds a month, maybe a little more than that. Um, so he eats fairly well. He's better than I do. Uh, you know, he's very easy going. Um, it's not like a hyper dog that you get running around all the time. You know, he's very mellow, chill, but I also think that um, comes with his environment and how he's handled. Um, if you keep him caged up and just, you know, you don't stimulate him. I think these dogs need a lot of exercise. They're meant to be out on farms and have a lot of land um, to roam. He got a good reputation in the community. Correct. You know, like he, a lot of the people talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I would say he's the community dog. Everybody knows him. Everybody, you know, cope with this, cope with that. You, know, you want to let your dog know that, like, if you don't listen to me in these situations, you know, this could cost you your life or, you know, better yet, somebody else's life or, or even my own. So, um, you know, structure is a, is a really big thing, especially when it comes to a large breed dog. I feel like, you know, the ad, you know, being my first dog that I actually kind of raised and took pride in training, um, I don't want to say it was easy, but you know, I was willing to, to put in the time. And I feel like a lot of times people jump into getting a large breed dog for their first dog and it could be a mistake, um, which will lead to, you know, un, you know, consequences. And, and sometimes that's not what you want. Um, you know, you got to put in a lot of time with the dog. You got to let them know that, you know, you're in charge and assert your dominance and, you know, they want to be alpha. His temperament. His temperament. Okay, so early on, you know, the way we handled them and what would you call it, neurological? Early neurological stimulation. Early neurological stimulation. Yeah, so um, it's just handling. Yeah, so the way I handled them from early on, you know, I, you know, I didn't carry them around a lot, but I would pick them up. You know, I let them know that, you know, I could pick you up, I could move you, um, I could put you where I need you to be. And he's always been receptive to that. Um, you know, I, I immediately socialize them with my family, my younger siblings. Um, you want them to be, you know, well-rounded, especially when it comes to kids and adults. So, um, you know, putting them in those situations early on and he's always responded well. Um, we've never had any um, outlashes or anything, any, any misbehaviors where I've had a question, you know, his ability to, you know, listen in the city it's very important that you exercise this dog daily so you know as a puppy he was getting taken out in the morning you know he was going on a walk when i would come home from work you know he's getting a walk you know we go to the park um so he's always doing something and then in terms of stimulating him and just kind of uh making his mind work and think is that you know when we go for walks you know at stop sign it's sit stay paw other paw and i mean they're highly intelligent because he was learning these things a sit paw lay you know, within his first six months. It wasn't like I was waiting for him to be a year old to do these things. So, um, you know, they, I, I would say that, you know, he's easily trainable, but, um, you know, that's all with, you know, time and consistency.